Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Kenichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so happy that you are part of our Reading with Your Kids family. We hope that you and your family are safe and, and enjoying each other's company. Today we'll be talking to Catherine Baralanda. She is the author of Raina's Story, part of the This is Freedom series. We'll also be talking to our favorite school librarian, Nadine Popper. Before we invite Catherine in, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Design to Shine, a Reading With Your Kids certified great read written by our friend Joy Reeser. Open any page of Design to Shine for a rhyme with art for your heart. Topics will lead you and your loved ones into fun, laughter, and joy. And onto the dance floor. You'll receive ideas to pay attention in new ways, reminders about kindness, and so much more in this alphabetical treasure. This is a book, a guide, and a gentle teacher all at once. It's a book for you. It's a book for your child. It's a book for your inner child about loving who we are to shine in the world. It is a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Check it out today. Designed to shine by our friend Joy Reeser. Join us right now from beautiful Florida. She is the author of a beautiful new series called This is Freedom. The first book in that series is called Raina's Story. Please welcome to the show, Catherine Baralaga. Catherine, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Really happy that you're on the show uh, and really happy to learn more about Raina's story. I understand that Raina is an elephant. Yes, she is a, a circus elephant um, who was taken away from the jungle when she was just a baby to perform tricks in the circus. And Raina's story is basically about how she meets this girl named Katie, who is a big fan, and her journey to liberation. I have to tell you, I love elephants. They are such fascinating creatures. And, um, I mean, I, uh, my, my first encounter with an elephant was decades ago at, at the old, uh, Boston Franklin Park Zoo. And it was heartbreaking for me because they had this big elephant house, but it was those, that old school, uh, zoo. So the elephants were, there were, there were three elephants and they were in a cage and they stood next to each other and they had a chain on their, on their ankles and they, they couldn't move and they just kind of stood there eating all day long and, and I loved seeing these, these, these creatures, but it was heartbreaking for me to see them just kind of chained up. Yeah. Um, me too. I, the first time I've seen an elephant was in captivity. I've seen them in zoos and in the circus. Mm -hmm. And I think it, you're kind of blinded by the, the amazingness of the shows and the performances that you don't, I, I don't think I realized right away what was happening until I, I was much older and I went to the circus mm -hmm. that I had started questioning what's going on here. And I began to do my own research on animals in captivity. Mm -hmm. So tell me a, a, a little bit more about this story be, between Raina and this, this young girl who kind of befriends her. Okay, so um, in the story, basically, um, Katie has been going to see Raina perform for forever, you know, since she's been going with her family. And she finally gets a chance to meet her. So when she does, she looks at her closely. She sees a chain wrapped around her foot. She sees scratches on her ears and on her nose, on her trunk. And so she starts to question what's going on. And she realizes, I think she, she has that moment, that connection with, with Raina. And then she realizes that, that Raina's not happy. So she does what she can to spread the word. She, she tells all her family and friends and basically a small group of people become bigger and bigger. And, yeah, it basically becomes her mission to to set her free. What was it that inspired you to to write Raina's story and to create this series, This Is Freedom? So 
Rain story is is very personal to me because um, when I was um, about 19, I went to see the Ringling Brothers Circus, mm -hmm. and during that performance, I saw one of the the tigers get angry with, with its trainer, and bef that that really just captured my attention. I couldn't let that go. So I went home, I did some research, and I saw, you know, videos of elephants being abused. And I think it was, yeah, the elephants in the video that, that really moved me, like, um, to really do something about um, these animals in captivity. So I shared the, the word on Facebook. I pleaded my Facebook friends not to go to the circus. And after that, every year when the Ringling Brothers would come back to, to the town, I would go protest Every year I was there, and one day um, during a meditation, the start, rain of story just came to me, and I began writing. Wow. I, I had experience. Uh, I actually auditioned for Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Clown College and uh, many, many years ago um, when I'm not – when I'm not doing podcasting, I'm a, a professional magician and clown and present schools, shows in schools. And during one of the auditions, the, the auditioning process um, is uh, it's, it's like a year-long thing. So I auditioned in Boston. I was invited back to audition again in New York City and in Hartford and some different cities. And on one of the audition days, I found my, myself backstage and amongst all the animals and the tigers were there in their their little train cages and i was fascinated and so i kind of snuck down in between the cages and i reached in and scratched one of the tigers behind his or her ears and um woke it up and it became very angry at me <laughs> and, and that woke uh. up all the other tigers and suddenly i'm like i shouldn't be here <laughs> Uh -huh. It's yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that was my experience. Of course, uh, Ringling Brothers has has gone out of business, and mm -hmm. um, they they are no longer. And there are very very few circuses that are traveling with animals these days. Um, it, it, it was funny be, being part of uh, you know kind of uh, uh, not part of the circus world directly, but having connections in that. I was concerned. I'm like, how can we have the circus without the animals, without the tigers and the elephants and, and the spectacle of that? But as we've discovered, um, circus is surviving quite well without animals with, with productions like Cirque du Soleil and, and so many others around the world. Yes. Um, yeah, Cirque du Soleil is super amazing. They, they don't use any animals. Ben, I don't know if you've heard of the, um, the circus that's in Germany. Yep. Yeah, now they're using holograms and stuff. So yeah, people find ways. You know, we're we're evolving as humans, and we're we're finding ways, and it's still very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Now, have you had any close encounters with elephants? So, so from that experience, like I said, it it really um, ignited a passion in me in trying to be a voice for the voiceless, and um, in two thousand. 18, I had the opportunity to go to Thailand and visit um, an, an elephant sanctuary where they rescue elephants in Thailand that, that work. They do like logging and uh, more like um, carrying uh, um, the tourists, you mm -hmm. know, around um, giving like the rides, elephant rides. Mm -hmm. um, so they do that kind of stuff in Thailand and this, this sanctuary rescues elephants that, that are in that work. And so I was, had the opportunity to, to visit the sanctuary. Yeah, that must have been incredible for you. It was, it was incredible. These elephants, they, they live so many um, years with exposure to humans. So they have um, a few illnesses, a couple of illnesses, and maybe just like use, they're used to being around humans. So they're not ready to go fu fully into the wild, so they're in this sanctuary where they're able to live their lives, but with just supervision mm -hmm. of humans. Mm -hmm. What's the reaction been uh, from folks who've read Raina's story? Um, I believe. Well, I, I've done a, a few readings at schools, 
And the children, they already know. You know, a lot of children, they just know before I even finish the story, they, they understand that, that the, that ele the elephants aren't happy in the circus. And yeah, I feel like intuitively children are just have this understanding that it's not a, an environment for wild animals. So I, I personally have gotten really great, um, well, feedback, the, the children love seeing Reina because I bring, you know, the, our, my elephant mascot, which is Reina, and, and they love it, and they, they are happy to see her. They give her a hug. They tell her how they're happy that she's free. So it's been great. It's been great feedback. Now, you mentioned that, that This is Freedom is a series. What other animals are we going to meet in future um, uh, additions to the series? Okay, so um, my next book, which I mentioned, was Lola's story. She's an orca in captivity, and you know we'll, we'll be um, reading about her journey to freedom. I have plans to make one about a tiger in a zoo, and those are my three right now that I'm be working on. How is this journey um, to become a children's author uh, changed you? You know, to be honest, it was, like I said, it, it came in a meditation where before this, I never thought of myself as an author or a writer. So it was kind it was like, um, an unexpected change, mm -hmm. but, um, it, it's been amazing to, to interact with children in this way, reading to them. I, I understand the importance of literature to children that I didn't, um, I didn't have this type of, um, experience before so i understand how reading is so important to children and and educating them about animals um that's that's amazing for me yeah it's such a uh, a great way when when uh kids meet characters that they can relate to and a, a, a story that they can immerse themselves in it's a, a great way to teach a lesson as opposed to just sitting down and and lecturing them and giving them facts and figures Yes, yeah, they're engaged. Um, we like, yeah, they they have the character, they have stickers, they they have each other to interact with. So, yeah, it's a it's a nice experience. Now, growing up, um, were there any books that um, you know kind of informed you and 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 helped you develop this love of animals? No, I, a book maybe similar to this, to the one I've written. I, as growing up, I've never seen anything like that. It was more as when I became more of a teenager and adult that I started, um, that I really, um, it, this passion ignited in me. It wasn't really much of a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that, that you've mentioned here in the show and that you mentioned in, in some of our correspondence is that you hope to give voice to the voiceless. What 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 does that mean to you? And and who are we talking about when you're talking about the voiceless? Um, so by giving the voice to the voiceless, I mean these animals. Um, these animals can't speak for themselves and let people know how, with their voice, how unhappy they are or what they're going through. So my mission is that in these stories, that people understand more what these animals are going through and to be their voice to um to share with children um what their their experience is like and to educate children on maybe not not visiting these kind of um places have you experienced i, I know like you know i mentioned you know my going to the franklin park zoo decades of the, ago that zoo has evolved in, in, in so many ways. They don't have the elephant house anymore. They don't have elephants. Most of the animals that they have um, have huge enclosures that they're able to, you know, to, to walk and run and, and live in. It's not ideal. They're not out in, in the wild and in the jungle and the natural habitat. But it, it seems better than it did when, when I was a kid. Um, uh, what's your feeling on that? Do you do you feel that 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 zoos are evolving, that's becoming more humane, or do you think oh, there's just no place for zoos today? Um, I think that they're headed in the right direction. 
for example, um, I'm not too familiar with zoos like here in the area that are evolving, but for example, I know SeaWorld is making efforts to to improve the quality of life of, of animals, their their sea life. Mm-hmm. Um, at this moment, I still believe that it's not it's not um, appropriate. It's not okay with what they're doing. Um, you know, the orcas are still in a small um, small container mm-hmm. or tank. But I do think that it's progress. I feel that that every few months we hear news and they are making progress. And I'm hoping that one day it is something where, okay, this is okay. You know, this, you know, people can come and and see these animals up close and the animals are happy and they're healthy. So at this moment, I don't um, see anything like that where I, I feel that. We've made like a huge impact on, you know, the, the welfare of these animals and for, for people as well. But I think that we're heading in that direction. Ah, that's good to know. One of the things that, that I'm fascinated to, to, to have learned over the years is just how complex both, both the, the animals that you're talking about, both elephants and orcas, they are able to communicate with each other and they have incredible family structures. And I know we've had Patricia Newman on um, talking about her book, Eaves Dropping on the Elephants, uh, and, you know, some studies that, that are going on in the wild in Africa and in Asia uh, where they're, you know, able to detect that, that elephants have language. They haven't been able to figure out what they're saying yet, but but they are able to um, uh, detect that, that elephants use very distinctive vocalizations with each other. And so they're certainly, you know, a lot more in, intelligent than I think people ever thought they were. Yes, definitely both, both orcas and elephants are incredible. They have these enormous brains that we still haven't fully um, been able to understand so yeah they they have their their own way of communication even orcas them um, i don't know if you've you known but different their different pods have almost like different languages different dialects like you said so it is incredible yeah and i think that that's that's what the major issue is is that these these um animals who might even be you know more um social than us, more social beings than, than even humans, you know, are kept in these kind of environments and taken away from their families that make it such a, you know, not wrong thing. So I'm wondering, do you have any ideas of, of what kind of, uh, you know, we want kids to appreciate nature and to appreciate animals. Uh, can Can you think of some activities that after we read, uh, Rain a story that that you know maybe we can we can take our kids out into nature and and observe what what kind of wildlife are are living around us. No matter where we are, whether we're in a, a city or out in the country, there there are that there is wildlife that that's living around us, and, and we're able to observe it. What what kind of things do you think families can can do after they read uh, Rain a story to kind of make a better connection with the wildlife in their lives? Well, um, there's there are many sanctuaries here, even in the United States. For example, um, there's Big Cat Rescue. We have um, the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. So these these kind of places they take um, animals from from places like um, circuses in in Guatemala or different countries, and they bring them, you know, where people can still come and see them. They can still um, tour the area and look at the the wildlife, but these these uh, they're not um, asked to do perform certain tricks or they're not starved. So so these kind of um, sanctuaries are really I think the best option at the moment for for um, educating our children and adults as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell everybody, please, where we can find out more about uh, the, the This is Freedom series, more, find out more about Raina Story, and find out more about Catherine Baralaga. So you can find out more on our website, CatherineBaralaga.com, as well as um, Amazon. The book is on sale on Amazon for those um, international. And you can find us at This is Freedom um, Instagram. 
and on Facebook as well. Awesome. Well, we've had a great time speaking to the author of the This is Freedom series, the first book in the series. Raina's story is available now, and we've been speaking to the author, Catherine Baralaga. Catherine, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much, Jed. I really enjoyed it. Through the magic of technology, we are going to be flying, flying through cyberspace from Fort Lauderdale to the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania to speak to our favorite school librarian, Nadine Popper. Nadine is here to share with us some great resources. We are in the midst of the COVID-19 quarantine. We're spending lots and lots of time together, time that hopefully we're using to grow closer to each other as family members and but it can be diff- it can be difficult sometimes because you know parents they are our kids first and best teachers but they don't have a ton of resources at their fingertips well that's when Nadine comes in she has some great resources that we can use to um, to, to help our kids continue their education and also help us grow c- closer together so Nadine what's the first site you think we should check out out. Oh, well, the first site that um, I want to recommend, um, and first of all, the, the sites that I'm going to share with you all have uh, no copyright infringements. And I think that's the biggest thing we want to make sure we support um, are any read alouds where, you know, full permission was given by the publisher for the works read aloud. But, um, and, and I know during this this time right now, a lot of publishers and authors themselves are opening up and and saying, like, go ahead, read my books out loud, um, record them. You know, that's that's great. Uh, and that that's absolutely wonderful that there's a lot of support that the publishers are doing for us. So, But we still want to be mindful of that. So the first site that I want to show or explain is what's called Storytime with Bill. Mm-hmm. Now, it is a YouTube channel, and it is in full support of little brown young readers. So um, it is with full permission that anything read by Bill is given full permission from the publisher. So he is reading all kinds of, of little brown books for young readers, and he's a, he seems like he's a hoot. So that is definitely one site you want to check out, and it is a YouTube channel. Now, one of the things, before we go any further, I I, I absolutely agree with you. I think it's so important that um, we respect copyright, we respect the intellectual property rights of uh, of authors and of publishers. Can you just expand a little bit about what that means and and why you think that that's so important? Oh, well, it's, it's, I don't even know all that there is to know about copyright because it is such a vast, vast uh, wealth of information out there. And so, but the biggest thing is with the the read aloud, you just want to make sure that if you're you know, reading it and recording it, that you do have full permission because there is um there is it's very possible that the attitude exists that if they if somebody can find the book read aloud online, then they will not go and purchase the book. Um, so that really is one of the biggest concerns out there. And we have to remember that the authors and publishers, this is their livelihood. Mm-hmm. So we certainly want to make sure that, you know, we are, you know, we're, we're respecting that, like you said, Jed. Yeah, it's just, it's the same lesson that I I think we should be teaching our kids about music and about movies. Yeah, it doesn't seem like, what's the big deal, um, you know, that that I'm watching, you know, uh, a bootleg movie at home. You know, what? if you're you're talking about a a big mega uh, Hollywood production company, then maybe it's it's not hurting them. And, you know, maybe that 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 actor that's got 20 million dollars to to be in that movie is not being hurt directly. But there are a lot of there are a lot of smaller artists out there, smaller movie firms, smaller authors, and they are 
dependent on, you know, people buying their intellectual property, buying their work. And it's just a moral thing, too. I mean, you know, uh, it's we don't teach our kids that it's okay to steal from the big bank. It's just wrong, <laughs> you know. So we, we do need exactly. to respect that. Yes, exactly. I, I totally, totally agree with you there. And um, continuing on with some of the other wonderful sites that are out there, um, there's also HarperCollins Publishing is also doing the same thing. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Storytime Read Aloud, and that is all HarperCollins' work being read aloud with their full permission. Uh, so you can also go there. And when I click on that one um, from HarperCollins, you're getting the – there's a book today, perfect for – uh, St. Patrick's Day is called Three Ways to Trap a Leprechaun. So, and that is by Tara Lazar. Uh, so that is available today along with tons of other HarperCollins books on that YouTube channel with full permission. Excellent. So, uh, we're, we're, we're suggesting folks check out Storytime with Bill and also Storytime Read Aloud, which are both channels that can be found on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Well, there's a, uh, a a couple of great sites that uh, I, I know. One of the things that's happening with a lot of parents is, you know, they're home with their kids and they think, "Oh, now I have to be the teacher. I've never done this before, and this is so challenging." Uh, I read one meme uh, yesterday uh, that uh, you know uh, the meme said, I, "I I homeschooled my kids for an hour and a half. Teachers deserve to get a million dollars a week." <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Jen? I think I read that exact same one, and I just laughed. <laughs> and and it it's a different skill set, but the wonderful thing is you don't need to do it by yourself. There's some great resources out there, and here are two wonderful resources that we can check out with our kids. Storytime with Bill and Storytime Read Aloud, two great YouTube channels that are reading stories with full permission of the publishers and authors. Hey, Nadine, yes. this is awesome. This is a great start. Um, I'd love for you to come back um, and and share some other resources with us and, and just uh, next week. Does that sound like a good deal? That absolutely works, yes. All right. We've been talking with our favorite school librarian, Nadine Popper. Please be sure to check out her books. Oh, tell us, uh, tell us uh, your latest mm-hmm. book. There's um, Porky Pet and Moppet, and then there's Randall and Randall. And actually, Randall and Randall has some wonderful online resources, too. So if you're looking for some information and activities to do about symbiotic relationships between some two ocean animals, you can check out Randall and Randall at Blue Whale Press. There's an activity guide to go along with it. I want to mention another read aloud resource that Nadine didn't mention because it wasn't available when when we recorded this. It's my YouTube page. YouTube and just search out Jedly, J-E-D-L-I-E. That's right. You search that page out. We just posted my birthday party. I celebrated my ninth birthday and I threw myself a magical party, but because of the quarantine, I couldn't have my family and friends over, so I invited all of you to join me. You can check it out. Go to YouTube and search Jedly, J-E-D-L-I-E. We want to invite you to make sure you check out the next episode of the Reading with the Kids podcast. Our guest will be Rachel Mann. She'll be telling us about the spaces you'll go. It is a great, great episode. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very, very wonderful. Of course, I want to thank our guest, Catherine Baralaga. Be sure to check out Rain and Story. Also want to thank our favorite school librarian, Nadine Popper. I want to thank my amazing team. I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for all she does for the show. I want to thank my author, Ambassador Peggy Koto. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. But most of all, I want to thank you. I know this is a challenging time for all of us. 
hang in there. We are going to get through this together. And when we come out on the other side, we will be closer and more in love with our family. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for keeping your family safe. But most of all, thank you so much for making the world a better place to your love. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. 